Hey guys, Ben from Back Photography here, and today we are looking at a quick photo shoot that I did with my friend Georgia at a train station that's near my house. Now, this photo shoot only took about 5 to 10 minutes, and I'd like to go over the settings I used in my camera, what camera gear I used, and the editing techniques. But I'd also like to talk a little bit about why we did this photo shoot and why it's, I think it's really important that if you want to be a fantastic photographer, you need to be really prolific with the amount of photo shoots you're doing, you know, making sure that you go out and do lots of photo shoots and really hone your craft. So, this photo shoot was done on a Sony A7R2 and we were using a Sigma 50mm 1.4 non-art lens. Along with that, for the light modification, we were using a Yongnuo YN300. And the reason we brought some light modification was, the first reason, it was completely dark outside, so the only light that we were getting was from the artificial lights around in the train station. And the color temperature of those lights isn't very flattering, in my opinion, for getting really nice skin tones. And with the Yongnuo YN300, you can really dial down the exact color temperature that you want from it because you have two settings on it. You have 5500K and 3200K, I believe, which are two different color temperatures, one being very cold and one being very warm. And you can put 30% of one and 30% of the other, if you like, or 50% of one and 20% power of the other. And you can really get a lot of flexibility from this light because you can mix these two different color temperatures and get the perfect color for the skin of your model. So here's a lighting diagram of where I was positioning the light. I chose a few different areas but I found that the position in the lighting diagram I'm showing you now was the best angle and it was the most flattering because you get a really nice highlight to one side of George's face and then you get some nice depth by applying some shadows to the other side of her face. So here is the first photo that I'd like to talk to you guys about today. The camera settings for this photo was an aperture of f1.4, a shutter speed of 1 160th of a second and an ISO of 200. And this was taken on a 50mm 1.4 Sigma non-art lens. So the reason I used a aperture of f1.4 is because it was really dark. So I wanted to have a really low aperture just so I could boost the brightness of the entire image and get a nice reasonable exposure so it wasn't too dark. The second reason is because I personally thought that the background of the image and of the landscape around us wasn't very interesting just because everything was so dark. So the reason that I blew down the aperture so low is because I was trying to get blobs of light in the background just to make the background more interesting and also a little bit brighter. The reason I used a shutter speed of 1 1 60th of a second is because it was so dark I needed to use quite a low shutter speed so that I could keep my ISO low and get a really nice clean image. Because even at low ISOs you can actually see quite a lot of noise in the shadow areas of your photo if it's a very very dark shadow. And if you start bringing up that shadow even a little bit you really start introducing a lot of grain into your photos. So I tried to keep the ISO as low as possible and that's why I was shooting at an ISO of 200. The native ISO of a Sony a7R2 is 100, so bumping it up to 200 did mean that I lost a little bit of detail, but changing from 100 to 200 still meant that I had quite a lot of dynamic range to play with, and I didn't really want to drop the shutter speed down too much lower than it was, so I was forced to use an ISO of 200. So me and Georgia both knew going into this photo shoot that we weren't going to get the best images that we'd ever taken just because first of all she didn't have time to prepare her hair and makeup and she was forced to wear her work uniform and also because we were kind of restricted with where we could choose to shoot just because it was so dark we had to find somewhere that was lit up we had to find somewhere that was accessible at night time so really the only options we had were the train station or somewhere in the city and we quite often go to the city to do photo shoots so really the station that we were at here was basically the only place we could go but the reason that we still went out and did photo shoots is because we both think that as a business owner whether you're a model whether you're a photographer whether you're doing anything if you do something that isn't perfect it's always going to be better than just staying at home and doing nothing at all and us both going out and doing a photo shoot meant that we gain experience we have more photos just in case that we accidentally capture something amazing we have content to put up on our walls just to keep our user base engaged. I really think it's important as a business owner that you need to keep yourself in the zone and even when you don't feel like going out and doing photo shoots, even if you're not super pumped about a photo shoot idea, it's really important to just go out there, take some shots anyway, stay in the zone, stay productive and eventually all of it will pay off 
because who knows you might go out thinking oh well I'm just gonna have a little photo shoot nothing's gonna happen it's not gonna be a particularly good one and then you take a fantastic photo you put it online and someone goes wow that's a fantastic photo I'm gonna book them for my next photo shoot or I'm gonna book them for my wedding the way I see it is it's just a numbers game so if you're only doing two or three shoots a month or less then you've only got two or three shoots worth of exposure that you're sending out into the world so you're only getting two or three shoots worth of people seeing your photos which means you're gonna have less exposure and less opportunities than if you're say doing two or three photo shoots a week because if you're quadrupling the amount of stuff that you're sending out into the universe, you're quadrupling the amount of exposure and reach you're getting with these shoots. But not only that, you're getting more experience, you're networking with more people. So even doing a few more shoots really increases your chance of your business succeeding and you networking with more people and you're getting more opportunities. Anyway, that's my little rant of the day. Let's hop into Photoshop and see what I did during the editing process to really make this image stand out. So the first thing I did was up the exposure in the entire image just because I was thinking it looked a little bit underexposed. Then I added a bit of clarity just to make Georgia pop from out of the background a little bit. Then I made the image overall a little bit colder by adding a little bit more of a blue cast. Next thing I did was drop the white and the shadows slightly. And then I added some vibrance to the entire image as well. So the next step I decided to do was smoothing out Georgia's facial skin tones. So I dropped the blacks in the exposure all the way down and reset all the other brushes just so I could use the paintbrush tool as a selection tool which indicates where exactly I've touched on the screen. So as you can see everywhere that I'm touching now goes black. And pretty much after I've highlighted all the areas that I think need smoothing out a little bit I'm going to remove the exposure and blacks from the paintbrush and then I'm just going to remove some of the clarity as well because I found that if you remove some of the clarity from the skin it really smooths it out almost like a blurring tool and I think it's a really aesthetically pleasing look. So here I am just reducing the clarity. Now if you go the other way it really brings out all the detail in the image but for skin that doesn't look very appealing so I find that just dropping it about 30 maybe 40 points depending on the scene can really help the skin look super smooth and super beautiful. So the next thing I did was just getting the clarity on a little bit and adding some exposure and just painting in the eyes a little bit just to make them a little bit bolder, making them pop a little bit more. Don't go too crazy with this. You only want to add a little bit just to make them look a little bit more visible and punch out a little bit more in the scene. So the next thing I did was got the same selection style tool that I did before. So just dropping the blacks and highlights and pretty much just making a selection of the entire background. Now for this one, wasn't super accurate with where I was painting, just as long as I wasn't painting the skin tones, I was happy. So pretty much what I'm doing here is getting a selection of the entire background and then adding clarity and also making the background colder because I found that the entire image had a very yellow cast, particularly when I was changing the color balance to make the skin look the perfect tonal balance. So to combat that, I pretty much just made the entire background a little bit colder just to make the entire white balance of the image a little bit more neutral rather than having a super yellow color cast. And after I sort of blueified the entire image, I just went with a smaller brush tool around Georgia just to make the areas that I didn't pound with the color balance so much make them blend in a little bit more with her and the background. After that I played with the saturation just to make the background a little bit more bold and colourful. Tweak the colour balance a little bit and I'm pretty happy with how that looks. So the next thing I did was just thought I'd make George's lips a little bit more red. I find that adding a little bit more colour to lips can really make a model's lips look not only brighter but fuller and a little bit bigger as well. So I'm just adding a little bit of a purple cast here using the colour balance tool as you can see there, and then also just adding a little bit more saturation as well. So that's everything that I did in Camera Raw. Next thing I'd like to show you is, even though I was shooting at ISO 200, you can see, well maybe you can't see, if you're in HD you might be able to see this, but there's quite a lot of noise, especially in the really, really dark areas of the image. So how you combat that is you just go to Filter, Noise, Despeckle, and that just runs an algorithm in Photoshop to get rid of all of the noise in an image and there was just a little bit in the top corner there where there was a tree so I decided to use the content aware tool just to delete that bit of noise. So the next thing I'm doing here is just getting the patch tool and removing any little blemishes or pimples that Georgia has. Her skin is actually quite smooth but because I was using the Yongno constant light and I changed the clarity of the image 
there's still a little bit of blemish and a couple of imperfections there just because they've been accentuated by my manipulation of the image. So I'm just going to fast forward through these patch tool corrections and we'll go on to the next part of the image. So here, instead of using the patch tool to get rid of all the little blemishes, I decided to just get a whole selection of her forehead, then use the Gaussian Blur tool just to blur out the entire forehead all in one go. And then after that, I noticed a little piece of hair that I didn't really like on George's forehead, so I decided to use the patch tool just to get rid of that piece of hair as well. So after I removed that piece of hair, I decided to get rid of some of these straggly pieces of hair on her head, on the top of her head and basically using the same technique just got the patch tool made a selection around the piece of hair that i didn't like and just dragged over that selection to somewhere where there wasn't any hair just to get rid of any struggly bits and sort of neaten up her entire hair after that the next thing i did was decide to make her hair a little bit bigger so just using the filter liquify tool and then pulling out her hair a little bit on the left and a little bit on the right making sure not to pull it out too much to make it look unnatural or to make it so that you can tell there's a visible warp around the parts that you have changed. I reckon that's pretty much it. So that's the entire image. I really hope you like it. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like if you did enjoy the video and feel free to subscribe. I'm going to be posting a lot more content like this in the future. And once again, thank you very much.